Well, some eye-opening new developments in the IRS scandal. A few days after the tax agency admits quietly on a Friday afternoon that the woman at the heart of the IRS's targeting of conservative groups scandal, whoops, had a computer glitch that deleted two years of her critical emails. It turns out that six other employees at the IRS had big computer glitches too. Trace Gallagher breaks it all down from our West Coast Bureau. Trace. And you have to remember, Megan, because Lois Lerner has refused to testify, her emails are the only records of exactly what happened during that time. The IRS has turned over some 67,000 emails to and from Lois Lerner, but these are emails circulated between other IRS employees. The missing emails are mainly to and from people outside the IRS. Lawmakers believe that might include the White House, Treasury, Department of Justice, and the Federal Election Commission. That's huge because the major push of this investigation investigation is to find out whether Lois Lerner and the IRS were acting on orders from Washington to target conservative nonprofit groups. Lerner claims her computer crashed in the summer of 2011, and when technical investigators later informed her that her records, including personal records, were not recoverable, she casually responded, quoting, Sometimes stuff just happens. Well, now GOP lawmakers want to know why the IRS Commissioner John Koskinen is just now telling them about the missing emails when he knew they were lost several months ago and still testified that all emails would be turned over. Washington attorney Cleta Mitchell, who represents one of the groups illegally targeted, sent letters last year to the attorneys representing the IRS and the individuals being sued, reminding them of their obligation to preserve evidence. Evidence. Well, now in light of the missing emails, she has sent follow-up letters saying, quoting here, we are deeply troubled by this news and the apparent failure on your part to protect and preserve all potentially relevant information and to advise us of such failure when you first learned it. That letter was sent before the IRS and we learned they also lost emails from six additional employees, including Nicole Flax, who was the chief of staff, to then deputy Commissioner Stephen Miller. Flax is apparently missing a year of emails around the time the Cincinnati field office was being told to up the pressure on conservative groups. When asked about the missing emails, White House Deputy Press Secretary Josh Ernest said, you've never heard of a computer crashing before? Well, cybersecurity experts say emails simply do not vanish. Listen. This is an episode of The Sopranos when six witnesses for the government disappear at the same time. That's more than a coincidence. When six sets of emails disappear at the same time, it's not a coincidence anymore. It's a conspiracy. And Megan, the IRS commissioner is back before Congress on Friday and again next week. Megan. We'll be watching that. Trace, thank you. Earlier tonight, I sat down exclusively with attorney Cleta Mitchell. She represents Tea Party groups targeted by the IRS, and she is not happy. Cleta, good to see you. And so now we know that it's not just Lois Lerner whose emails have gone missing, but those of six other key IRS employees. You believe this was a cover-up. Tell us why. Well, I absolutely think that there's something crazy about this. I mean, first of all, there are all these federal laws that require that these government employees' documents and files and correspondence and emails all be maintained. As citizens, we all have the right to file a FOIA request, a Freedom of Information request, and we get to see. But the they say, has okay, but let me those. jump in. But they say they were saved on a server, but the server only the emails for six months, and then it would write over the tapes. Well, if that is true, then that is an egregious breach of trust and a violation of federal law. And in fact, once the congressional investigations began and once uh, the lawsuits were filed by my clients and others, they had a duty to immediately notify Congress and immediately notify the federal judge who's assigned to handle these cases. They have, in fact, not only did they not notify anybody, but they, uh, we got a very snippy letter from Lois Lerner's, Lerner's attorney last September saying that when we sent a litigation hold letter, which is standard in litigation, you say, don't destroy anything. And she basically wrote back and said, well, you don't have to tell me my job. Well, apparently, we do have to tell them their job. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm absolutely shocked that it, number one, that this is their process because that violates federal law. And number two, that they did not immediately notify the Congress and then immediately notify the federal judge when these lawsuits were filed. Well, this do, you is just think, do, do you think that that is evidence that this is bull? 
that, I mean, because what I'm hearing from other lawyers who are representing other victims and from uh, those who are on the House of Ways and Means Committee who are outraged over this is they don't believe it. They don't believe that that server overwrites itself every six months. They think that this is all a big excuse, especially now that we've heard it's not just Lois Lerner, but conveniently, it's six other people whose emails cannot be produced. Well, I don't believe it. And I, I must tell you that, Megan, I've been hearing from uh, forensic experts across the country who've emailed me. I've been hearing from government employees who say that all of that is downloaded every night. It's constantly saved in, on the server. And for them to now say, oh, we only keep it for six months, let me tell you this. I had a client a few years ago, the IRS was going to revoke its tax exempt status because they deleted their emails at the end of the calendar year. And the only way we were able to persuade them not to was to agree that we would stop doing that. The thing so is, now Cleta, the they, IRS they, does it? They would have us believe that if you work at the IRS and you email somebody and then six months pass, that's it. It's irretrie If you happen to have a hard drive crash and it's not available on your desktop, top, no email that predates six months, you know, prior would be retrievable. That's insane. What? How could the IRS ever do business like that? Well, they don't do business like that. That's the point. This is all false. I absolutely don't believe it. It is a sign of bad faith in the litigation, and I think it's a it's contemptuous of Congress and the congressional investigations. I note I would note that today, Congressman Issa has issued a subpoena for all of the backup documents relating to this because I think this is a scandal in and of itself. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely not credible. The uh, the it's Lois Lerner email where she's first complaining about her crashed hard drive back in August of 2011 talks about how um, she is missing her lost personal files. It doesn't talk about losing emails, Cleta. Do you think that they are trying to sell us a pig in a poke here? You know what I mean? Saying, oh, look over here. She talked mm -hmm. about lost personal files. Oh, I'm telling you, that means all of her emails. Oh, and by, by the way, it also means all the personal emails from six other IRS employees. That was one hell of a computer glitch. Let me tell you something. I think the person we all need to be looking at right now is the director of the FBI. Because surely the FBI, our, our, our government agency that's supposed to be able to protect us from criminal activity, surely with all of its sophistication, that it could have gone in, it should be going in immediately and uh, impounding all of this and getting and conducting an investigation, an independent investigation. But failing that, I, what we're going to ask the court for is permission to bring in our own independent forensics experts to have access to these right, computers because let me and hard ask you drives. This. Because right now it appears that the, the reason they're not producing these documents is because they say, oh, back when Lois looked for the documents in 2011, the IT department said they couldn't retrieve them. There's been no satisfaction, has there, that There's an actual none. independent expert has come in and said, I'm telling you, they're irretrievable. That is absolutely correct, and that is what has to happen next need to get credible, independent forensics experts who are not just the IT department somewhere in the bowels of the IRS who are just doing probably what they've been told to do. I certainly didn't detect that Lois Lerner was particularly upset about the loss of her emails and files. Well, um, again, it's lost personal emails. files, and who knows right. what that means. Now they want us to believe it's emails, all emails during the relevant time. The other thing the is the Ways and Means time. Committee is now looking at the White House saying, okay, we can't get communications from Lois to you from Lois. Why don't you produce them, White House, if there are any? Why don't you, Democratic senators, produce them if there are any? Why don't you, Barack Obama's reelection team, produce any emails you had with Lois Lerner during the relevant time frame? Quick answer on this one. Do you believe they will? I don't believe they will without a court order. I, and I think that's, it, we are at the point in time in this whole scenario where absent a federal judge ordering them to do these things and to follow the law, I think that they believe that they can avoid uh, compliance with the law. Mm. Cleta, thank you. Thank you.